G'day ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome aboard one of my most hotly requested aircraft. This is the Misha Smith BF109 F4 Tropical. Now I love my 109s, I really do, but they don't get a lot of time on my channel. And part of the reason for that is how they fly. Most of the planes that show up on my channel are planes that are very good at very rapid high speed attacks. They're the kind of machines that you want to get into the fight as quickly as possible and dig in, and it's generally a way that I like to fly. I love my 109s, but these are a real tactician's aircraft. They're not easy to fly. They will take a lot of skill to get into position. You need to think about what you're doing and what you're going to do after that two to three steps ahead if you're going to be good in this aircraft. As a result, 109s tend to have battles that are also extremely long. The one you're about to watch now was around 30 minutes. So as you can imagine, there's going to be some significant editing in order to cut this battle down to size. So I'm flying out in this battle with Semper Mortem, and we've been dodging in and out of the Russian planes, just seeing exactly how they'll react to a fight. I've picked my first target from Kreb Squadron, it's a Yak-3. I want to really get rid of these things as fast as I possibly can, these are dangerous aircraft. Yak goes into a dive to evade, so I immediately go into a loop to take altitude and re-dive down. Never, ever, ever fault follow a Yak into a low altitude situation. Try and come down from above at all times. Shot in, and fireballed. The fire's ticking away doing damage, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that he's out of the fight. I'm not expecting him to be able to pull out of that one. And there it is, aircraft destroyed. So there's my first kill of the match. Now, I did chew a lot of altitude in that manoeuvre in order to get that kill. However, I did check around me beforehand to make sure there was nobody else in the area that could capitalise on it before I made it. So it was a sacrifice that was worth it to guarantee the kill. Now I'm trying to get back to altitude, however, the 109 overheating is kicking in. Now the Tropical is better than the standard F4 for overheating, however, not by much. Water overheating issues is a major thing on this aircraft, so you'll spend a lot of time running heat management. Thankfully we have a damn good team who is swarming nice and tight, and that yek 9 t got torn in half, that's something I really like to see. So going for a little bit more altitude now, this whole fight is happening at incredibly low altitudes. In fact, this was one of the lowest altitude fights I'd seen in quite some time. The only time you really see fighters this low to the ground is in ground forces events when there's player tanks floating around. Well, fights in War Thunder don't really happen at high altitudes either, but when you've got the altitude advantage over the enemy and you're only at 4,000 feet, that's pretty low. With spotted targets, however, attacking ground targets over the city, Speaking of ground forces, so we're going in there to deal with them. An IL-2 farming tanks and AAA. Now we're already down to having only 10 ground forces units remaining, so we really need to deal with him in a hurry, otherwise he's going to farm out the rest of our vehicles and he, we're going to lose this to ground forces. You can already see we've taken a massive hit on tickets from up above. The Russians definitely have the lead on this one. However, it looks like the IL-2 has seen me coming. He turns in my direction, so I immediately take it into a climb. Go vertical, IL-2 cuts straight in underneath, he was hoping for a head-on, but I am not going nose-to-nose -nose with that many guns. Those 23mm will hurt, regardless of what ammunition he's carrying. Roll it over, put it back into a dive, come in from behind, and he had no chance. Second kill. And right as I took out the IL-2, Grievous arrived in the fight. Now, I can't remember exactly what happened here, something delayed him from arriving in the battle. However, now he's here, I have both my wingmen up, and we can go about starting to turn this battle around. So we have a Russian P-63 King Cobra sitting right above us at the moment. It's just circling around, working out who to dive on. Attacking something with the performance of a King Cobra in a 109 from a lower altitude is the equivalent of committing suicide, so I'm climbing away from him at the moment, trying to get as much altitude as I can. I'm not going to be able to get to his level, but I'm hoping he will dive down on my teammates, and I'll be able to get in above him and intercept him as he's trying to boom back for altitude. And sure enough, it looks like he's closing distance rapidly and beginning to lose altitude in a hurry. I'm now at a higher altitude, Grievous has gotten above him, he's continuing through, he's missed both targets, he's now below everybody. Turn back in, now getting him while he's down isn't going to work, I've got to wait till he comes up, because as he gains altitude rapidly, he also loses speed. Push my own speed out, he's not pulling out of the guns of my wingman quite as fast as he would like. Just about got guns on target and fire my burst, but exactly at the same time, Grievous fires a shot and fireballs. So he is now a burning wreck. Well, at least I thought he was, but his fire goes out and he's still flight capable. He's obviously got a severe lean to the right hand side, but he's still managing to out accelerate Grievous and Semper Mortem at the moment. I'm the only one that's up here that has the ability to keep up with him, and he's heading straight back for his runway. 
we're not going to let this guy get home. So the King Cobra put himself into a dive and started running. It took us three minutes to finally chase him down. Thankfully, managed to get within gun range and put in a kill shot. So, that was the third kill of the match. However, we ran into a small problem at this point. We've managed to turn the match around despite being vastly lower in tickets. We've eliminated most of the enemy team, preventing them from being able to drain any more tickets from us. The problem is we don't know where the remaining aircraft are. And so the long flight hunting for the enemy begins. So the first stop, as always, is to check the enemy runway when you're missing targets. It could be that there's somebody AFK sitting on the runway, it could be they're back for repairs, it could be they're just circling their own AAA looking for cover since the rest of their team is melted. But it's usually a good place to start to try and find your missing enemies. Why there was nobody at the runway? We found a Yak-9 that was on its way there. Now I haven't seen this guy the whole match, so I'll quickly bring up the scorecard to have a look. He's in second place, he's got a crap ton of ground kills, but he's got no air kills. So it's a Yak-9 that's been ground strafing. I'm not entirely sure what his ammo load would be like. I'm not going to take a chance. It is a Yak-9 after all. But still, I think it's probably likely at this time that he is out of ammo, or very, very, very low. Won't go head-to-head. -head. Going head-to-head -head with the Yak-9T is just insane. Then again, maybe I should have, because he was in fact out of ammunition. He wasn't going head-to-head -to, -head to try and shoot us. He was going head-to-head -to, -head to try and ram us. A tactic that unfortunately Grievous falls for, so my wingman goes out of the sky, but that is one Yak-9T that we no longer have to worry about. So at this point we are missing one remaining enemy aircraft. We don't know what it is, we haven't seen it all match, and we only have 11 minutes of fuel remaining, so we figure it's time to go back to base. Probably a wise idea considering the flight from their base to our base was almost 5 minutes on its own. So bring it in sharp, combat landing with cannon brakes, try and bring this plane down as fast as it possibly can. I need to get back in the air as fast as possible to start going and hunting the enemy aircraft. Now I am being cautious of my cannon braking, the last and most embarrassing thing that I would want to do is accidentally shoot down Semper as he flies over me inverted. Now you'll notice Semper isn't actually coming into land with me, what we're doing is flying one down one up. I'm putting down first because I'm down to 5 minutes worth of fuel and I want to get back into the air as fast as I possibly can. Semper's staying up at the moment and flying a combat air patrol for me or a cap. He'll circle the runway, keep an eye out for enemy aircraft, the last guy that's missing, and just watch what's going on, because it's just me and him left at this point in time. Once I'm fueled and armed, I get back in the air. I've just told Semper that I'm about to take off. He is now coming down on the runway, and he's about to land behind me. I will take off and climb over the runway in a spiral, doing the same for him, keeping an eye out for enemy aircraft. I can't put enough emphasis on how important doing things like this is in realistic battles. And in simulator battles as well. Having a squad mate fly a cap while you go down to land could be the difference between you being strafed out on a runway or not. It could be the difference between you winning a match or not. Good squads don't just cover one another in the air, they cover one another while they're on the ground as well. So back in the air and just circling around the runway and as if to prove my point, what do you know? There's the final remaining enemy aircraft, an I-185 sitting above our runway watching us on the ground. Semper is just taking off, I'm just making my circle wide and climbing gently. If Semper and myself had both put down at exactly the same time, we would have both been in the air side by side in close contact with one another at low speed, still trying to climb when this guy popped up. I'd actually be willing to guess that that guy's actually been up there for a while and he's been watching the dots. If both of our dots had been on the runway at the same time, he probably would have boomed in several minutes ago and killed us both while we were on the ground. It was just that there was one of us up and he couldn't track us via dots. That was probably what saved us. So I pushed it into a dive to get my airspeed up as much as I can so I have enough speed to manoeuvre. I-185 comes through, push it over and turn it hard, straight back into the vertical. He's trying to boom out and clear distance, take some range shots. Down to 220 kilometers an hour, so I've got to level out, so turn back in the opposite direction to get some speed. He's going to turn around and dive back. All I'm trying to do right now is buy enough time for Semper to get up here as well. With the energy advantage the I-185 has, I'm not going to be able to take it solo unless he does something incredibly stupid. So I'm going to need Semper at my altitude so we can split his attention between the two of us. Why one of us is being focused, the other one can kill him. So, Semper's passing 3,000 feet and the I-185 has turned around and is coming back. I begin my turn back, I want to head towards Semper now. It looks like Semper's going to be the next target. 
Flaps raised, wep on, push the nose down. I need as much airspeed as I can if I'm going to be able to keep up with this bloody thing. Semper dodges out of the way. 1.8, come on, I can close distance on this guy. No, I can't. I am closing distance, but he's got so much energy up, he's going to beat me in the vertical. Semper tries to snipe from long range. Trying to follow. Water is overheating. I can't afford to pull back off on the weapon at the moment, though. If I do, I'm not going to be able to keep up with him. And this is a hard climb. 280 kilometers an hour. And the 0185 is starting to pull away. So, level out, back off on the engine. No point in trying to follow him now. He's faster than I am. He's also got the energy advantage. But that did just level it out. Semper is directly below me as well. If he dives through and I manage to drag him down, I'll be able to drag him right into Semper's guns. Unfortunately, we're taking too long. I've just realized I have two major problems here right now. That one round that the I-185 clipped into me right after takeoff during my first maneuvers actually took out my radiator. I'm not going to cool down. This engine's going to continue heating up until it explodes, because that's what F4 engines do. At least in War Thunder. Now, I can't go back and land, because this guy's hungry for a kill. I put this thing down on a runway. He is going to strafe me out. The second problem we have is while we managed to stop all their ground attackers, unfortunately um, they had a fairly distinct advantage on ground forces, and it's been about 15, almost 20 minutes since we took out their last ground attacker. In that time, the ticket counter has bled to hell, and we're down to an 18 on 2 ground forces battle at the moment. We're about to lose to ground forces victory. All this I-185 has to do right now to guarantee himself a win is not die. That's, that's it. That's all he's got to do. Not die. He can see my coolant leak spearing out behind me. He knows my plane's not doing well. Semper's at low altitude at the moment and having trouble climbing up. The I-185 has the advantages and we only have two ground forces units left versus 18. We're going to lose. All he's got to do is not die. And honestly, it looked like that was exactly what he was going to do. He is slowing down at the moment. I thought maybe he might have had some kind of engine problem, but that's not the case. What he was actually doing is overheating as well. So he's pulled back on the throttles entirely, and he's letting his engine coast to cool down. As you can see, he's pulling away now. He's just accelerated his engine again, and he's trying to decide what to do. Now, as we've broken into the cloud, he's actually turning the plane around, or getting ready to, to come right back at us. And he picked a wonderful time to do it too, because as I said, this engine is going to overheat until it explodes. And I've just gone red on oil and water. And there's the I-185, he just come out of the clouds going past. I think he misjudged exactly where I was going to be. He's decided to abandon turning with me, and it looks like he's pushing a dive on Semper, so I'm moving to follow. I was going to punch wet, but I've gone pink in the nose already. I can't afford to continue doing that. I'm going to have to do this without. I need the engine to last as long as I possibly can. He goes vertical. I'm trying to keep this as smooth as I can to maintain airspeed. Uh, 68, almost there. Come on, I can get this guy. Fire and miss the shots. Follow it through the loop, he takes a hit, and manages to take out Semper. I do have to give it to this guy, he's a bloody good pilot. And now we're down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Now it looks like the I-185 took some damage from Semper when he got that kill shot after all. He's wallowing down quite a bit, and he's not accelerating away anywhere near as fast as I thought he would. He seems to be all over the place, dropping altitude rapidly trying to outrun me. However, I'm managing to keep up with him despite my engine flashing red and black at the moment. Get another good solid hit there. 117 degrees on water, 112 on oil. This engine's going to go black in any moment, and there it is. I'm now flashing black. Get another good hit on his tail. It looks like I've done control surface damage because he's having some real trouble maneuvering there. It almost looked like he was going to go down into a crash. Just trying to follow this guy's lead. I'm down to 73 shots in the cannon. I cannot afford to miss with them. I have to get a kill shot with them. Another hit, but a hit just isn't good enough. 55 rounds left. Come on, come on. 53, 49, come on. We've done 46 cannon shells. He's, what the hell are you aileron rolling like that for? And there's the kill shot. And that's why you don't aileron as a defensive maneuver. That little aileron roll he pulled at the end there was all I needed to actually align the guns and execute him. Winning me the match. So the results for the match. First place for the team with four kills. Ground Forces Rescuer, Shadow Strike Streak, Fighter Rescuer, Avenger, Professional, Windstreak, 
Final Blow, The Best Squad, Terror of the Sky, and Bulletproof. 81,580 Silver Lions, and we came in with 3,571 research points. Match time was 33 minutes and 15 seconds. So, the BF-109 F4 Tropical. I really do love this little plane. It could really use a few new camos though. The paint job on it is not great. But other than that, this is a awesome little machine that I really do love flying, and I don't fly anywhere near enough. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies. Thank <laughs> you.